Crypto Twitter is awash with the rumor of SEC Chairman Gary Gensler resigning from the regulatory agency. Pro Exerp attorney John Deaton commented on the rumors, saying a Gensler resignation with Judge Phyllis J. Hamilton of the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California has granted class certification in the class. Action Lawsuit Zykanov EC Ripple Labs in At a critical point for XRP investors, the main complaint revolves upon Ripple's failure to comply with federal and state rules by failing to register its digital asset, XRP, as a security. This decision allows a large number of XR purchasers to file securities lawsuits against Ripple, its subsidiary XRP EE, Ezio Bradley Garlinghouse, the last court date in the XRP investor class. Action case against Ripple was two months ago. Bradley Sostek, the main plaintiff, filed a request to assemble a class of global XRP owners who purchased, still hold, or have sold XRP at a loss. Despite Ripple's international presence, this order affirms the right of us investors to take legal remedies. Defense attorneys successfully argued that the litigation should be limited to us investors. Judge Hamilton acknowledged the changing legal situation around cryptocurrency in this complicated legal sector. She emphasized the difficulties that different countries face when classifying digital assets emphasizing the importance of allowing individual jurisdictions to enforce their cryptocurrency regulation. She added, This ruling marks a significant step forward for the lead plaintiff and his legal team who allege a loss of $118,100 after selling XRP in 2018 due to Ripple's misleading claims about the token security status. This opens the door for other XRP investors to join class action and seek compensation for their alleged losses. The defense attorneys for Ripple and Garlinghouse contended that class members had differing opinions on XRP security status, which they believed would lead to strife within the class. Judge Hamilton, on the other hand, dismissed this argument, indicating that any objections could be resolved through the regular opt-out procedure. Sussman Godfrey's Nick Spear expressed pleas with the court's ruling as the case moves forward. A Ripple spokeswoman emphasized the court's rejection of a worldwide class and the significance of allowing other countries to regulate cryptocurrencies to regulate cryptocurrencies independently. The court's willingness to wait for the outcome of the sex UV. Ripple case before proceeding was also noted by the spokeswoman. Several members of the XRP community have speculated that a settlement in the sex UV Ripple lawsuit is imminent in light of Judge Sarah Netburn's decision. For background, yesterday, Judge Netburn instructed the parties to hold a settlement conference if they feel it would be beneficial at this time. If so, the parties must agree on three mutually suitable days. Yesterday, Fox Business reporter Eleanor Terrett tweeted a link to the report. Because the court schedule is so full, the judge requests that the parties establish the settlement conference date at least six to eight weeks in advance. The ruling said that the court would not abide by any requests for settlement discussions that were submitted after the deadline. Furthermore, it said that late requests for settlement talks would not result in a postponement of lawsuit deadlines. However, the ruling has caused considerable consternation among XRP supporters, who had hoped the dispute would soon be resolved. Strangely, Tarrant used Twitter to explain Judge Netburn's ruling on the settlement. Tarrant claims that a settlement is unlikely to be reached in the next six to eight weeks, notwithstanding Judge Netburn's direction. She clarified that owing to the court's hectic schedule, the ruling only applies to the parties organizing a settlement conference six to eight weeks in advance of the preferred date. Jeremy Hogan and John Deaton were among the attorneys the well-known journalist who has been following the sex UV. Ripple litigation requested to emphasize the consequences of not participating in the settlement meeting or reaching a deal with Ripple. pro exer attorney Fred Rispoli responded by saying the SEC and Ripple would meet for a settlement conference to avoid the court's ire. But attorney Rispoli is certain that, like the two previous settlement conferences, this one will end in failure. He continued by saying that settlements often occur when both sides find a middle ground that is acceptable to them. It's worth mentioning that, according to attorney Rispoli's predictions, either one or both of the parties will likely appeal Judge Annalisa Torres's summary judgment ruling. Attorney Bill Morgan said Tuesday that an appeal of Judge Torres's decision had been planned. 
You may remember that the court finally handed down the much-anticipated summary ruling, which was seen by many as a qualified win. Although she found that Ripple's programmatic sales of Excerpt do not constitute securities, she did find that the company's sales of XRP to institutional investors do form an investment contract. The SEC issued a statement confirming that it is currently reviewing Judge Torres' judgment to determine its next course of action. Yesterday, Gary Gensler, the chair of the SEC, shared these sentiments. Gensler reports that the SEC was dissatisfied with the court's decision on retail investors in the Ripple case. He continued by saying that the panel is reviewing that aspect of the ruling. Outspoken pro-Ripple lawyer John Deaton has voiced confidence about the SEC's EVs. Ripple action, saying that Judge Torres would fully examine the central issue of whether XRP is a security in her future summary ruling. On Monday, Deaton said unequivocally, XRP is not a security. He then drew analogies between XRP and other assets like as orange orchards, whiskey, condominiums, and even Bitcoin. BCC, Deaton's thesis focused on the fact that, although being advertised and sold as investment contracts, these assets' basic qualities remained unchanged. Beach was once sold as an investment contract, sex UV, shavers, but that particular sale didn't transform BCC into anything other than what it is, a digital commodity, he said. Furthermore, contrary to popular assumption, Deaton said that Judge Torres would not be afraid to confront the problem of XARP secondary sales. I believe Judge Torres must address the underlying asset and secondary market sales. Could she dodge the concerns and yet make a ruling? Of course she could. However, ignoring the sex's premise and failing to address these difficulties would be a bigger act of judicial activism, according to him. To bolster his point, Deaton cited a similar case heard by Judge Castle in 2020 regarding the Telegram messaging software. This legal battle started when the SEC intervened and delayed Telegram's planned distribution of gram coins, planned distribution of gram coin. However, Judge Castle ruled in favor of the SEC, ordering Telegram to reimburse investors $1.02 billion from its failed initial coin offering, ICO, for the Telegram open network. It is critical to note that the SEC's assumption was that Ripple participated in ongoing activity resembling an ISO seeing each sale of XRP as part of a larger strategy involving security. However, Deaton highlighted that the situation with XRP different from the Telegram case since the latter constituted an ISO with written contracts. Deaton further claimed that XRP, which is powered by the XRP, XRPL technology has been operational and publicly traded for more than seven years. Notably, even SEC employees were able to acquire XRP until 2019 which was not the case with the Graham cryptocurrency. The issue of XRP secondary market transactions has been a key point in the litigation struggle between the SEC and Ripple. While the SEC accused Ripple of marketing XRP as an unregistered securities, it failed to differentiate between Ripple's direct sales and subsequent secondary market trading, resulting to misunderstanding. Deaton recently said that Judge Torres may consider this issue based on a prior examination in the SEC versus Elb reaction since it puts additional light on the matter. However, although there is no assurance, Judge Torres' summary judgment opinion might shed light on excerpts of security classification, possibly having a big influence on the crypto sector.